Today's Broncos breakdown is a fresh list of Vic Fangio possible replacements coming off week 17. The Broncos look pathetic against the Chargers. They go into week 18 against a hungry Chiefs team, and it looks to me like the Broncos will end the season on what's a four-game losing skid, and that may spell doom for Fangio in Denver. So before I show you my new list of possible replacements and head coaching candidates and targets for Denver, if you want a new head coach for the Broncos, Go ahead and like the video. Just want to get a kind of a, a feel and a pulse of how everyone's feeling about the possibility of a changing of the guard if Fangio is relieved of his duties. Now, before I show you my list, I just want to preface with how the list was made today. It's a bit of a combination of two ingredients. What I'd like to see happen and what I think GM George Payton would like to see happen or not like to happen, but what he will do. So I'm kind of in between a little bit because I can show you my list and tell you who I want all together, but it doesn't matter because I'm not the GM of the Broncos. So coming in at number five on my list, it is Kevin O'Connell. Yeah, no, not to be confused with Kevin Connell, the star from Entourage who played E. No, different guy. This is Kevin O'Connell, the offensive coordinator for the Rams, which he's been doing since 2020. So he's been there for a long time, right? No, uh, a couple catches with Kevin O'Connell. First one being he does not call the plays for the Rams. And that's kind of the direction everyone is chasing is the next play caller head coach. And that's the pursuit of happiness sort of for GMs. Of course, Sean McVay calls the plays in L.A. So Kevin O'Connell, as an offensive coordinator, just drinks a lot of Diet Coke most likely during the game and chimes in once in a while. But he is absolutely not the play caller. But he would want to be the play caller if he took over in Denver. The other thing worth mo with uh, mentioning is every single team is kind of chasing that next Sean McVay. Super young, offensive-minded, genius guy, and... Kevin O'Connell very well could be that guy and very well maybe not could be that guy because, well, we'll show you later on why maybe chasing a super young offensive-minded guy is not the case. But speaking of Kevin O'Connell and speaking of Kevin Connell, what's your favorite show to rewatch? Recently rewatched Entourage for like the second time in almost a decade. So let me know in the comment section what your favorite show to rewatch is. If you love Entourage, which I do and most of Chat Sports does, hopefully a Kevin Connell relationship with Denver goes a lot better than a E and Sloan relationship did in the show. Number four on my replacements list, it is Brian Callahan, the offensive coordinator for the, uh, for the Bengals. You see a direction I'm going here? A lot of offensive-minded guys. But Brian Callahan comes in at number four. And the Bengals' offense this year has been super fun to watch. Joe Burrow has looked like the number one overall pick he was. Jamar Chase has no problem seeing, catching, and running with the football. He does everything, honestly. Uh, but just like Kevin O'Connell, Callahan does not call the plays for the Bengals. That duty falls on the head coach, Zach Taylor, who's also a disciple of Sean McVay. So a trend going on there of Sean McVay disciples, the young, up-and-coming, offensive-minded guys, kind of floating around the NFL. An interesting note, though, about Brian Callahan, and he has some experience with the Broncos. He was on their staff from 2010 to 2015, Sort of a fancy intern. I, he was an offensive assistant and quality control coach. I love the NFL, and I've been covering it for a long time, but I have no idea what an offensive quality control coach does. I, I don't know what he looks over and controls, but it gets you a paid job in the NFL, and it gets you to climb up the ranks. So Brian Callahan is number four on my list. You've seen two so far, but I want to know, who is your dream Fangio replacement? Try to keep it in the realm of possibility. You can't go get Belichick. You can't go get, well, you don't even want, if you want Andy Reid. Uh, who wouldn't want Andy Reid? But I get it if you, if you hate the Chiefs or hate the Chefs. But let me know who your dream Fangio replacement is. is. This will be the pinned comment on today's video. So if a YouTube ad break comes on by, scroll on down and let me know what you're thinking. Also, if Vic Fangio does get canned on Black Monday, well, we're going to have a video coming out ASAP Rocky. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel. That way, you stay in the know for everything Broncos. Hit that big red button and subscribe. We're giving you news and rumors content all year long. Off-season doesn't even matter to us because it's the on-season, really, in the NFL. No stop. So make sure you subscribe to the channel today. And if you already have, we appreciate you. Number three on my list is Kellen Moore. 
Once again, the offense is dominating for Big Fangio replacements. He's the OC for the Dallas Cowboys, and he's been doing wonders in Jerry World. He is revered as the top up-and-coming offensive mind. Of the group, everyone's chasing Kellen Moore. Everyone's falling in love with him. But I'm just going to pump the brakes for a moment on Kellen Moore. Broncos fans, more than anyone, most like more than any other fan base, know what knows what happens when you hire a really young and offense or even defense. I'm talking about Vance Joseph, even a uh, geared coach. Most recently for Denver on the offensive side, Josh McDaniels. He was one of the youngest NFL coaches. I think he was the youngest NFL coach hired at the time, or one of. Uh, Sean McVay holds that title now. He was hired at like 30 or 31 years old. Kellen Moore is 33. It's very fun to go out and get the next Sean McVay, but there are, you know, some uh, things you to keep in mind of whether or not you're going to get the next Sean McVay or whether or not you're going to fall on your face with, like, the next, next Josh McDaniel. So that's why I like Kellen Moore, but I'm just a tiny bit weary of it. And that's why I get to number two. Number two is Nathaniel Hackett, another offensive guy. But this one comes with a lot more experience and pedigree. He comes over from Green Bay. And the number one thing that I'm thinking about is if you are able to land Nathaniel Hackett, that may very well mean you could also lure Aaron Rodgers with him. I have no idea what Aaron Rodgers' future holds, whether he wants to stay in Green Bay or whether he wants to stay to his word before the season and leave no matter what after this year. Does he win a Super Bowl and go, all right, let's try and win another one elsewhere like Peyton Manning? I wonder where he did that. But what I do know is that Aaron Rodgers will want to go to a place that he has a lot of control over. And Nathaniel Hackett and him are pretty close buddies, I have to imagine, after working together for some time now. So that could be a nice duo and so you, ha you hire Hackett with the hope that you can bring Rodgers over. Other thing, does not call plays either. Uh, Matt LaFleur does that, but he has experience, and I like that. 42 years old, he's been coaching since 2003, so unlike the first couple guys on the list, he's still offensive-minded, but he's been around the block a couple times. Make sure, guys, before we get to our next segment here on today's show, the next list, you go over to BetUS. Our, our supporting sponsor uh, has a great deal going on. You get 125% deposit bonus for going to chatsports.com slash bet. Now, if you don't want to bet in the Broncos, and I don't blame you for that, you can do it in the NFL playoffs. If you have a good feeling on who's going to win the Super Bowl, you can put those futures down. All playoffs, make sure you do your betting at BetUS with that link right there, chatsports.com slash bet, along with the promo code Broncos 125. Speaking of the upcoming matchup, I don't want to show you the odds. They're ugly, but they were Chiefs minus 10 last I saw. So in the meantime, predict the score for me. Broncos Chiefs, let me know who you got in this one. If you still believe in Denver, power to you because I don't think they're going to win this game. But if you do, let me know by how much down below, or if you're riding with me on the Chiefs, unfortunately, let me know what your score predictions are as well. Like I mentioned, though, I think the uh, hope and idea about around Nathaniel Hackett is if you hire him, that will be the number one destination for Aaron Rodgers. That's a big gamble because I don't like the idea of hiring someone because of the buddy they bring along. That's a big risk. So let's say you hire Hackett and then you don't get Aaron Rodgers. Is, is Hackett still a good hire? I'm not so sure. We'll show you the rest of my list in just a moment, but I have a question for you guys, though. Which type of head coach would you want to replace Fangio if he does get fired? You want an offensive-minded guy, or you want to stick with defense like Fangio? Because the thing with Fangio is his defense this year is undeniably kicking ass for the names out there. It's a lot of names that no one had heard of before the season due to trades and injuries, but they're still producing numbers. So let me know what you think over offense or D for defense. Coming in at number one, and this has been a reoccurring theme for my Vic Fangio replacements list, it's Brian Dable. It's the offensive coordinator from the Buffalo Bills. I just like him a ton. I think he comes in with the best balance of what you're looking for. One, if you don't land Russell Wilson or Aaron Rodgers and you want to draft a quarterback, Dable has done wonders with Josh Allen. A lot of people thought Allen was a bust of a pick. He was too inaccurate. He just had a really strong arm. Now look at those people. Uh, other thing for Dable, uh, some of the cons now for him. The Bills have been up and down this year. He was the number one or number two candidate going into this season. Probably still is one or two on most people's list, but the Bills have had some hiccups, ups and downs. The other good thing for Brian Dable is he knows a thing or two about winning. 
He's a five-time Super Bowl champ. He was with the Patriots for the for a long time, and he's also been at the collegiate level. He coached under Nick Saban. He was a college football playoff champion a couple of years back. So he's won at the highest level of both the NFL and college football, which I don't think you should read too much into because there's lots of people who have won with the Patriots, like Matt Patricia, that were flops of NFL head coaches. But I do think it is worth noting, you want to bring someone in who's been around championships and knows what it takes. My biggest pro is he's got the balance of offensive mind and he's got the balance of experience. I get it. You want the next big gun uh, young shot of Sean McVay's of the world, a uh, Zach Taylor like the Bengals. But personally, I just want to pause for a second because I think you, what you may see is a huge rush for that type and then a bit of a blowback because not everyone is going to be an offensive genius. I like Brian Dable a ton. He's got tons of experience in the NFL. He's been around success and he's been around failures. He was with the Jags when, well, the Jags were the Jags. So he knows what success looks like and he also knows what to avoid. I love the experience around Dable and that's why he is the number one candidate on my list and hopefully GM George Payton's other candidates on the show uh, on my list going six through ten I got Doug Peterson just outside the top five maybe I snubbed him maybe he should be in the top five but the reason why I don't have him in the top five is his fallout with the Philadelphia Eagles was a little peculiar Won the Super Bowl in 2017 and quickly things spiraled out of control. Seemed to have lost the locker room maybe a little bit. And I think there was more skeletons in his closet than was revealed to the public. And maybe that's known within league circles. So I got him just outside the top five. Uh, Dan Quinn, been to the Super Bowl with the Falcons in his second year. Had a bad ending there, no doubt about it. But he's doing great things right now in Dallas and has made his defense actually fun to watch. The enemy with the Chiefs. He was probably the number one or number two with Dable going into this season of a top candidate to consider. The Chiefs offense has fluttered at times and also doesn't call plays. And then I think back to the last offensive coordinator in Kansas City who was hired by another team, a.k.a. Matt Nagy. And you know how that's gone for the Chicago Bears lately. Byron Leftwich with the Bucks. He's just super young. He's a little too young in terms of even NFL experience. He's only been in the NFL coaching circle since 2017. That seems a little too early for me. Plus, maybe he's riding off the coattails of Tom Brady too much to be given the keys to a kingdom. And then number 10, Todd, Todd Bowles. Uh, all I'll say about Todd Bowles is the Jets probably made a huge mistake firing him after winning 10 games in the season. And look where they've gone since. One more time, running through my list here. 5-1, to one, Kevin O'Connell. Up-and-coming guy with the Rams. Maybe too soon for him, but you never know. This is the NFL, and you can never really guarantee anything. Brian Callahan got a little more experience than O'Connell, but still pretty young at 38 years old, 36 years old. But then again, he'd be um, the same age Zach Taylor was hired by the Bengals uh, when he got the gig in Cincinnati. Kellen Moore, 33, but he is the lover boy. Everyone is just foaming at the mouth over this guy. Nathaniel Hackett could come with Rodgers, and then Brian Dable, who I think is just the most well-rounded of the bunch and still has plenty of success in Buffalo right now. You've seen my list. I want to know from you guys. Who's your favorite candidate from it? Comment your favorite name below or favorite name elsewhere. Let me know what you're thinking down below in the comment section. We'll catch you later here on the Broncos Breakdown.